What's wrong with me, Doctor? Well, I can't give you a definite answer, Mrs. Hightower. In medicine, we're never 100% sure. Now, when the pain gets too bad, take one of these. But try not to take more than two in any given day. I'm gonna die, ain't I? <laughs> well, we're all going to die, Mrs. Hightower. Look, perhaps I should have a chat with your husband. Doctor, I got three more like this at home. I gotta know, I gotta make plans. about dying. It's cracked. It ain't cracked. It's got a paper with ribbons on the wall. What well, about that doctor told the hand laser? Little Jimmy had the ad you turned out to be the diphtheria doctor. It's all cracked. This one's an army doctor, he knows. It's cracked. See, I got this thing growing inside of me. I don't want to hear about it. You gotta hear about it. No. Yeah. It's in me. And it just keeps getting bigger till there's no room for the other stuff to do what it has to do. And in time, my body's just gonna stop. How much time? Two months, maybe a little more. You gotta make plans, Martin. No. No plans. If it happens, it happens, but I don't want to think about it. And I don't want to talk about it. Get yourself into bed today. Give me that. I was gonna make soap and vinegar and suet pudding today. I'll, I'll do all of it. You just tell me how. Come on. Well, what about the harvesting? Well, I won't do it much. Most of it's done anyway. Now tell me about the soap. Pudding. Come on.
doing? Just tidying up a bit. I'm fine, really. I'm feeling much better. Martin, what are you going to do when I'm gone? We got to talk. I got to know. Oh, goodbye. How? You can't manage a farm and four young children yourself. I want to today. Amy, come here. If it's God's will, and you go, then I'll just worry about it then. It'll be too late then. We gotta start worrying now. What are you gonna do with the children? You can't tend them. What are you gonna do? I don't know. Jessica's old enough to tend herself, maybe Nathan. Maybe they could stay with me and we send Margaret and Jack off to Amazon, Cleveland, at least for a few years. Your sister's got six of her own and poor as a rat. Well, maybe she could just manage Margaret and we'll take Jack and we'll send him to your brother Daniel in Baltimore. I don't know. You expect me to die knowing my family's scattered all across the continent? You can't separate my babies. I'll come back and haunt you, I swear. Maybe I'll just sell the darn farm. I'll go back to Bucks County, open up a harness shop with my father. I'll have the kids with me all day long and have kin to help. Martin Hightower. We came across 2,000 miles of purgatory to claim this land. We've been working 18 hours a day to make something of it. Ain't worth buffalo cookies now, but someday. This farm is their inheritance. Don't you dare sell it. Don't you dare. Oh, what do you want me to do? Start worrying about it. Don't you think I hadn't been? Martin! I know what we gotta do. We gotta find you another wife. I don't want no other wife. Not now, but after I'm dead, you're gonna need another wife. It's the only way. Now put that down and think, who are we gonna get? Now look here, Mrs. Hightower. If there ever comes a time where you are what you said, maybe I'll put my mind to it then. But if you'll excuse me, I don't intend holding a discussion with my first wife about the selection of my second. Can't wait till after. It'll be too late. Everything will fall apart around here. We gotta start now. We gotta have someone ready to sit in my shoes the minute I'm gone. Now you just stop this, Amy. See, your conversation's ungodly. God? Are you saying God don't want you and the children to have a life together on this farm? God wants to disperse this family, is that what you're saying? I don't know what the heck I'm saying. But there are ten men for every one woman on these plains from Texas to Dakota. Now, where are you going to find one who wants to tend a farm and four kids what aren't even her own? All the more reason to start looking now. Vandermeer? Yes? I'm Amy Hightower from across the creek. I was wondering if, if I could have a talk. Come in, sit. My wife, Merka. Pleased to meet you. I'll get some coffee. Oh, no trouble. Please. Uh, I have a sickness, gonna die reasonable soon. Ain't the fever. Oh, that's too bad. I'm sorry to hear that. My husband and I have four children, eldest seven. After I go, he's going to need a wife real quick. I hear you have a daughter, Caroline. I assume that's her? Oh, no, that's Hester. She's just big. She's only 11. That's Caroline. Anyway, I was wondering if you'd let my husband take her to wife when the time comes. Oh. I see. The homesteaders got a fine piece of land. 20 acres corn planted this year. We got six cows, ox, pigs and hens. Got a nice size soddy and an oak sideboard we brought from Maryland. 
We got a cotton mattress, a goose feather quilt, and a calico store-bought frock she'd have. Might just need some taken in. Martin's a, a real gentle, wholesome man. He'd make her a fine husband. Uh, Miss Hightower, you seem like a fine woman, and I wish I could help you out with your situation, but uh, there are already five offers of matrimony on Caroline ahead of you. The mill owner over there at Bellevue, he offered me $600 for her. He's an old man, but he's a good Christian. And that Smith over there, he's got a handsome young son that's going to inherit that whole business one day soon. <sighs> Mrs. Hightower, I know the kind of life a Saudi woman lives. I just want something better for my Caroline. I'm sorry. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. Thy rod and thy staff comfort me. I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. He was a good farmer, a good husband, a good father, a good man. We know you'll take him gentle into your bosom, Lord, and we pray you'll send comfort and grace to those he left behind. Dust thou art, and unto dust thou shalt return. your forgiveness for intruding on your grief, but I happened to be riding past and witnessing the proceedings, and I just had the feeling it was fate that brought me here. Please, can I talk to you for a moment? Please. All right. I see you've just been widowed, and are going to need a father for your children. And it just so happens in a short time, my husband's going to be a widower in need of a mother for our children. So I'd like to ask you on his behalf if you'd consider marrying up with him. I understand and I appreciate it. Unfortunately, it comes a little late. I'm already spoken for. Oh. Well, um, I wish you both the best. under some misunderstanding. Sorry for disturbing you. Good day. Hey! You looking for the widow Hattie Donahue or the widow Isabel Donahue? Be good now, and don't you speak lest you ask something. Martin! Please, come in. This is Miss Hattie Donahue and Miss Isabel Donahue. This is my husband, Martin Hightower. Hello. Nice to meet you. And these are our children, Jessica, Nathan, and Jack, and baby Margaret over there in the crib. The Lord never saw fit to make me a mother. But they all seem... healthy. They are. And good-natured, all of them. Well, um, shall we sit down?
Ladies, my wife has made a chokeberry pie, and I hope you'll stay and refresh yourselves. But Miss Donahue, I aren't going to marry you, and that's the finish of it. I thank you for the visit. Now, if you'll excuse me, one of my hogs is ailing. Sorry, Amy, I just couldn't take that woman to wife. But we agreed. You have to get married again. I know, but not her. Why damnation not? She's a strong, moral, healthy woman. She don't give me the tingles. What? She don't give me tingles. A man oughtn't have to bet a woman, don't give him the tingles. Well, then don't bet her. You don't have to if you don't want to, you could still marry her. It's a man's duty to bet his wife. A man don't bet his wife, he's not a man. There ain't nobody else. I've looked for miles around. Well, we just looked further afield then. Oh, gravity! Oh, I give you the tingles? Every time I look at you. Sarsaparilla? Sarsaparilla. Take a seat. Thank you. You all right? I was so sure in a town this size there'd be some marriageable women. I have to locate one and there ain't any. That's true. As soon as one shows up or a young'un grows up, men swarm around like flies. I bet there ain't an unwed female between 14 and 114, aside from ladies on the line. Ladies on the line, who are they? Well, you know, <clears throat> they live in cribs down by the edge of town. And they're unattached? <laughs> so to speak. They're working women, if you get my drift. Working at what? Thank you. Come on. 
What do you want? I was wondering if I could talk to you from. I'm busy. Can't you see the door is closed? Sorry, Sorry about that, darling. Now we're working. of your time. Please. My time's valuable. Um. No, come on in. My name is Amy Hightower. You're Pearl? Yeah. What's your last name? <laughs> I don't need one. Well, uh, how long have you lived in Cedar Springs? Well, too long. Are you married? Yeah, I'm married to my work. What do you want, lady? I want you to marry up with my husband and tend to my children after I die. Which is going to be soon. All right. You haven't even asked me where we're going or what sort of life it is. You haven't even asked me what my husband's like. Does he kill people in their sleep? No. Then I reckon I can handle him. You like children? Some. Some not. Same as with people. Well, I gotta warn you. Life is pretty hard and weary. Wait, wait, wait. You having second thoughts, lady? No. We can just call the whole thing off. Well, I guess I was just kind of worried. I mean, here I am entrusting you with my home, my man, my children. I don't know nothing about you except... Except I'm a whore. <laughs> well, then let me tell you a little bit about myself. Goodbye. Hmm. I ain't just a whore. I'm a good whore. A damn good whore. House I worked at in New Orleans, men made reservations for my time, days in advance. In California, them miners, they paid up to $500 for half an hour of my time. Just a cup of coffee was $80. But anyway, in there, that rat trap, I got by, surrounded by girls half my age. You know, that ain't easy, but I'm good. I'm good. I'm a good whore, just like I'll be a good mother and a good wife. So am I going with you or not? Because I'm going somewhere. I'm packed. Is California pretty? This is my husband, Martin Hightower. Martin? Pearl? He do for you? He'll do. 
she do for you? <clears throat> I want you to know none of this weren't my idea. None of it, no fashion. But my wife had arguments and I didn't have answers for them. She do for you or not? She'll do. Ain't you gonna tell him? I'm debating the necessity of it. How's she gonna get back to Cedar Springs? Pearl ain't going back. She's staying. Staying? Yeah. Pearl ain't never lived on a farm, nor had no children of mine. I had a lot to teach her. Besides, once I get down to dying, it could take a long time. Gonna need some help right here. I ain't godly all of us living together here. She can stay in the shed. You can build her a bunk, I'll make her some curtains. No, Amy, her and me and you and you and her and... It's the only sensible way. Sensible, but ain't got it. Nice chatting with you. So for Eric, Nathan gets them all the time. I just mix a little tobacco juice and onion, boil it up, pour it in the air warm. And you'll notice I always leave cobwebs in the corner. Stops the bleeding. And for the crew pie. Oh. Excuse me. Oh. Can you get that? That's a good one. What is this? Buffalo droppings. Makes good uh, fuel. You bring them in the house? Gotta bring them in to use them. The storm outside. They're all dried out. Hard to smell at all. But come winter, you'll be real grateful for them. I'm sure I'll rush right out and Kiss the first buffalo's ass I spy. Mm. 
Well, Abe Lincoln should have forgot about the slaves and freed you. Oh! Oh! oh. My soup! Slept on worse. I'll bet. Sorry. Uncalled for. That's all right. I never knew you could put a whole sentence together. Just something someone gave me once. Can I try it? Maybe sometime when you had a little more skin showing through that mud. I know why you're here. Wish I did, kid. Uh, how old do they have to be before they start changing themselves? I'll do it. No, I'll do it. thinking about <laughs> about all those nights I was laying with some fat sweaty unshaven foul breath drunk just huffing and puffing on top of me never realized how lucky I was Yeah. Morning. Morning. Watch this water. It smells good. Got it from Europe. I like to look my best for the pigs. I was going to prepare the jerky for the smoking. Thought you might want to see how. Mm. I can hardly wait. Here. Try some. I make my own complexion salve from white wax and sweet oil and rose petals. Ain't the same as store bought. That's so dear. Beautiful black deer. Thank you. These are for you, Jack. Are they beautiful. Yes, black deer. I'm sure my friend would like. Some, too. Goodbye. 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 I wonder what he thinks about us. 
Probably thinks we're plumb strange. Yeah, he's got my vote. Listen to you. Since you got here, you ain't stopped sniping at the way we do and the way we are. Lady, I ain't even started yet. Oh, well, if you hate it here so much, why don't you just pack up and leave? Because what the hell are you going to do if I do? Are you going to find stupid enough to take on this mess? Oh, well, don't you worry about me. I'm sure there's another old whore ready to pack it in somewhere. Oh, God. I'm sorry. Pearl, don't leave, please. I ain't leaving. Deal's a deal. Look, when I was 12, my daddy sold me to a whorehouse. I didn't have a lot of choice in the matter then. But there was times down the road, I had some put by. I could have got out. I know others had done it. When I was young and pretty, I could have found a man and raised kids. I had a choice. I made it, and now i got to live with it. manage to hate what you got here just a little bit makes that easier to do I try to get in an hour during the day and then an hour after supper so this here's a good primer to start them out on and then this one's for history and uh, here's a book of English poems by some some English fellas and it's a might hard but I like some of the words Pearl. Listen, I never had much need for reading, so I'm not going to be able to help him. Can't your husband teach him? No. Martin pretends to read the Bible, but he only knows it by heart. But it, it doesn't matter. They're building a schoolhouse. Hope to hire a teacher by February. It's only six miles. Jessica and Nathan can attend there. Good. Look, I might be able to teach him a few sums. I'm good at that. Ask me what 35% of something is. Go on. What's 35% of 600? 210. Figure it. Go on. Ask me something else. Tougher. Real tough. 4,980. 1,743. That's a wonder. How did you do that? The house I worked at in, in New Orleans. The Port Rouge. Whatever I earned, I kept 65 percent. So I got to keep 35 percent. So I got real good at the calculating. <laughs> pick her up under the arm. She won't slip or anything. Oh. Just pick her up. Set her on your shoulder oh. right there. Ain't exactly ugly, are they? No, well, they ain't. Thinking maybe you'd like to have one? Still could. One got started in there once. Had to get it stopped by the local barber. He did a little bit too good of a job. Ain't no way in leather. I'd rather get started in there. Oh, oh, oh. 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 Oh, she picked the berries, rolled the dough, did the whole thing by herself. First pie she made in her whole life. Now you tell her it's good. Oh, it's good. Silver tongue devil, ain't he? Straight away, all right? Okay. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, oh. 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 That's the person inside me. Every night. 
Pearl wanna have at it. It's fine with me. How it what? Do it, you know. What? You know. Holy Louise! Woman, are you out of your mind? As soon as I die, you're going to be doing it anyway. Why wait? What kind of man do you think you married? You're a good man. But you're a man. And you're entitled to the comforts of a woman's body, and I can't give it to you no more. Well, that's fine. We'll just call her right in here, and you can sit right over there, and you can watch us have at it, and give her instructions on the whole damn thing. I just wanted you to know... I just want you to know that if I hear another word about this... I'll call the whole arrangement off and send her packing. Understand? I understand. It's considerate of you to think of it, though. Thirty-five percent of one hundred dollars is thirty-five dollars. Thirty-five percent of two hundred dollars is seventy dollars. Thirty-five percent of three hundred dollars is a hundred and five dollars. Jack? Huh? You get Jack's milk? Milk? Uh, yeah. against him. You know, me, I always, I always loved birds ever since I was, I was tiny and I did their calls. I can do all kinds of, I can do all kinds of howls. You know, I can, this here's a um, screech owl. This is, um, this here's a, a flammulated owl. This is a, um, uh, Great horn now. Real impressive.
Let go of him. Well, Amy says to go ahead and do it. I don't imagine it's going to be too easy doing bird calls without your teeth. Well, you're, you're a whore, aren't you? No, I ain't a whore. I was a whore. But now I'm a fiancé. You got that? something that, you know, she reads better than me now, and Mr. Honecker gave us his Atlantic Monthly. It's only a year old. He let us borrow it. Oh, just let me sleep, okay? No, kissing. Why not? Kissing's special. Anybody can do this. Animals do this. People see only creatures that can kiss. Ought to mean something. What about the rest of it?
You better go. She'll wake up. She'll miss you. No, it's all her idea. It's what she wanted. Sometimes what a woman says she wants is a long walk from what she really wants. Well, I think we're going to tell her about it. I think she's just going to be real happy that you and me are getting along. Tell her? Uh-huh. I don't think so. Well, I'm going to... Oh, yeah. And, uh, uh, this here was, uh, real nice. You can tell her that, too? Of course. Well, hold on. I don't think I want to miss this. Oh, Jessica doesn't pay no. it. I want to talk to Pearl. Oh, oh. oh all right. I'll just, uh, yeah. Pearl? Come here. <clears throat> Was he all right? What? Was he, you know, satisfying to you? Was he all right? Anybody knows that it ought to be you. Well, of course, he's always been fine for me, but he's the only man I've ever known. And you, with your broader experience, might judge him differently based on more stringent standards. Phrase that real nice. Thank you. <laughs> um... Well, based on my stringent standards, he uh, stood up real good. <laughs> mm. I'm pleased. Pleasure was all mine. <laughs> Just before he... Out anything? Well, I was kind of busy myself, but um, I, I think glory, glory. That's it. Every time. Every time. <laughs> Every time. Oh. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Don't it hurt you to think about me with him like that? Yeah, it does. But not as much as I thought of you leaving. Yes, <laughs> 
family. This here is Royal Spencer. He owns the farm 30 miles over to Riverdale. We know each other from, from church. You want some something to eat or something, Royal? Uh, no, thank you. Uh, maybe some coffee? Coffee? Coming right up. Coffee? My wife just had a baby. It's our first son. Uh-huh. Uh, we're having a shivery week from Saturday, and, and I'd like to invite uh, you and the missus. Oh, well, Mrs. Hightower, you see, is over here in bed. This is our, our friend, Miss Hickson, and as you might notice, my wife feeling none too well. She's, um... She's dying. Ah, uh, hush now, Nathan. You She's and go. No, Amy. She never stops working. Does everything I used to and has to nurse me as well. They ought to do her good. Amy. Don't argue with me. Just do it. We'll be fine. Well, what do you think? It's beautiful. Maybe a tad too beautiful for the folks around here. Yeah, that's what I figured. It's the only party dress I still got. Well, maybe we could let out mine um, around here, and it would fit you just fine. Oh, I don't know. It's one thing, barring a woman's husband. Party dress is a whole other thing. Um, maybe a few more buttons, I think. Um, Martin? Oh, I need some water. Jessica will fetch it for you, and Jack and Nathan will start the fire. Nathan's pretty good with the, with the matches now, Nathan. We'll be fine. I'm feeling better. <clears throat> your arm. Why? Just offer her your arm. You make a fine looking couple. Starting. You go enjoy yourself. dance earlier, but I uh, figured you was the message to that fella you come in with. The Royal tells me you're just staying with him and his wife. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, you're the prettiest woman here. The fact is, you're the prettiest woman I've seen since I got here six months ago. I guess you're probably the prettiest woman i ever seen. I guess what I'm trying to say is... I'm pretty? <laughs> yeah. I was wondering if I might be able to come by and call on you some evening and with the possible eye on eventual matrimony. <coughs> Excuse me. Thank you. What do you want? Marry me. What'd you say? Didn't have a chance to answer. Excuse me. You danced with her already, and now she's dancing with who brung her. 
I just want to finish our conversation. Your conversation is finished. If you do that again, you're going to regret it. <clears throat> well, I'll take that chance. I could have knocked this block off. He was just lucky he was a little faster and stronger, a little more skilled than I was, that's all. Yeah, he was fortunate in that regard. Let's understand something. I'm not your property. We have a business arrangement. A provisional business arrangement. And if certain eventualities should come to pass and I become your wife, then you'll be entitled to certain expectations in regard to my behavior. Until then, I'm going to do what I want with who I want. What in the hell are you talking about doing a business arrangement? After how we've been together? I don't count for nothing. <laughs> in deference to your wife's wishes, I've simply been servicing certain of your biological needs. That's all that is. Whoa! And how come when I saw you in that man's arms, it felt like someone's banging a stake in my gut? How'd you get here? Jessica, help me over. You can bring the rest of my things in the morning. What happened to you? Oh, don't mind that. What are you doing? I want Pearl to move into the house with you. No, Amy. I can't do that. That's your home. It ain't gonna be long now. It'll pleasure me considerable to see all of you living like a family. Considerable. No, absolutely not. Makes no sense, my being in the house. I keep you awake all night, and, and I can't rest with the children playing. Well, I'll just march right on over there, and I'll keep them still. I don't imagine the next while being too pretty. And I'd rather the children didn't have to see and hear everything. Please. That's what I want. Three days since she's kept anything down. It's okay, honey. Come on in. Now we shouldn't do this now. Yes, we do. Gotta do it now. 
got to do it proper. You want me to stay? Of course. Got to have witnesses. No, honey, right? Okay. The last will and testament of... How do you spell testament? I don't know either. Just do it how it sounds. It'll be fine. Amy Marigold Hightower. I didn't know you had a middle name. <laughs> I never liked it much. <laughs> I think it's pretty. To my beautiful daughter Jessica, I leave my jade pin. That was my grandma Riva's. And to Nathan, I leave my volume of poetry. And to Jack. To Jack, I leave my daddy's silver tie pin. And to my precious baby Margaret, my photograph and my diary so she may know me a little bit. And to my enduring friend, Pearl Nixon. All my dresses she can find use for, in particular. Well, you can leave that one out. My wedding dress. And to my loving husband, Mark. My share of the claim and all the rest of my worldly goods and possessions. Let me start it. Okay. Now you sign. Here. <coughs> Jesse, honey, you go in and see to the children's supper. It's in the stove. again for some Johnny King. Let me get it while it's hot. Just want to run and jump and dance 
and eat like a pig. I feel so good. I guess God wasn't ready for me yet. Baby hell was so crowded nowadays, they're using Nebraska for the overflow. <laughs> I feel so good. I feel so good. You love her, don't you? I don't always love her. I was merely substituting for her during her indisposition. I thought it might be permanent. It's not so. Go on. You know, it just ain't right. First she sends me to you, and now you send me to her, and... I feel like some great big old India rubber ball. It's all right. Go on. It's just real confusing being a man. place back there now. You know that show. Just like that, just up and go. Whoa! I was hoping to avoid this very conversation. Well, it ain't fair. We had an arrangement. Yeah, that's right. We did. And you didn't keep up your end. You didn't go belly up. You just can't trust some people. We would have lost the farm if it weren't for all you've done. And we owe you so much. Not as much as you think. I took $20 in the egg money. You know, these last months... I didn't exactly get nothing from him. In fact, if you just give me a ride to the station, we might be near quit. So where are you going? Oh, maybe Oregon. Got lots of lumber camps up there. What are you gonna do? No, Pearl. Oh, it's 
It's what I do best. I don't know what I'm gonna do. If I'd wanted a husband, I wouldn't have any trouble around these parts. Put a skirt on a warthog, somebody would marry it. I, just a husband and a family. It just ain't what I want, that's all. Why not? Who knows? I do. Because in your heart, you already have a husband and a family. Mine. Whoa! You ain't leaving. We're gonna work something out. This farm is your home. You belong here. What about your husband? I'll work something out there, too. It makes such perfect sense. There's way too much work for all of us to do around here. So it'll be like this. I'll do the housework, and Pearl will help you in the field one day, and the next day we switch. That way you'll always have a helper, and life will be easier for everyone. Sounds practical. Now, Pearl's insisting on moving back in the shed. But I figure, with all of us working, you'll have time to put that addition on we were talking about, and Pearl will have our own room right in here. We'll get started on it right after planting. Good. And there's one other thing. Since Pearl and me are going to be sharing all the chores, the cooking, the cleaning, the laundry, the child rearing, I think it's only fair that we should share everything, including your attentions. What exactly are you proposing? Well, you have a deep feeling for me, don't you? You're my wife, Amy. And you have a deep feeling for Pearl, too, right? Well, yeah. And we both have similar feelings for you, so I don't see any reason why all these feelings shouldn't be accommodated. You don't. Well, what about God? Why are you always bringing him into it? He won't mind. King Solomon was God's anointed, and he had a thousand wives. And those Mormons, they're Christians, and they have as many wives as they want. Well, I ain't no king, and I ain't no Mormon. So how was you plan on doing it? It's like the housework. She gets me Monday, Wednesday, Friday. You get me Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. Or maybe you was planning on us all bouncing around in bed all at once. Well, I'm sorry, Martin. I just thought you might like the idea. I didn't say I didn't like it, Amy. I said it aren't right. And it is right for Pearl to leave here, no place to go, when we promised her this would be her home? Well, no, it aren't, but... But she can stay here without... No, she can't. A woman has needs, too, just like a man. She does? Yes. And it's more than that. Pearl has a very special attachment to you. been with me. You've been with Pearl. Yes, but whilst I was with you, I was just with you, and whilst I was with Pearl, I was just with Pearl. I didn't go switching back and forth night to night. What if it wasn't switching back and forth night to night? What if it was, say, half, half a year with her and half a year with me? Seems a little more dignified. Yep, that might make a difference to me. I think that can be arranged. What do you think, Pearl? Who gets winter? We'll draw straws. I think we managed that right well. Seal it with a kiss. have to wait exactly half a year. I think three months might work fine. Or maybe one. One month might do. Or Tell you what, one week might do fine, as long as it wasn't, you know. Back 
and forth, night to night. Right. First, anyways. Reason in that shed. I hope she's all right. candies before. How do you know? You know. You know. Cool it off a little bit. And this here is my last pee. Oh, Amy. Never really appreciated it before. I want to miss it. It's a real good thing. You ever notice? No. Well, try to pay it more heed in future. You know, you had bad spells before. a real good head. They build that high school up in Holdridge. You make them go. Jessica, she just got to know you love her. But you got to tell her every day or she forgets. Jack, he tries to see what he can get away with, but just let him know what the limits are and he'll accept it. Okay. And Margaret, a little early to tell, but I think she's gonna be a beauty. Still ain't no reason to spoil her. Spoil her a little. Okay. Oh. Any tips on how to handle your husband? Oh. Well. <laughs> it's 
someday years from now you and him are going to be having some argument about something or another and he'll make some nasty reference to your life before you came here of course he'll feel rotten about it and be all contrite and beg you to forgive him you will forgive him won't you sure I will right after I knock him right upside the head with the iron pot Is that all right? Well, pot's my extreme, but philosophy's good. You gotta get some rest. Oh. Pearl? A while ago, I was talking to my maker, and I was real angry with him. I was asking him, why? Why do you want to take me so soon? But then I realized, it's the only way I could figure out it, get me to meet you. You shut me up real good. Lord, thou hast been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, or even thou hadst formed the earth and the world, from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil, yea, it is even he that shall keep thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth forevermore. Will you take this man to be your lawfully wedded husband, to have and to hold, to love and to cherish in sickness and in health until death do you part? I do. And to you, Edwin Jerome Beasley, take Jessica Ann Hightower, to have and to hold, to love and to cherish in sickness and in health until Mm-hmm.